Harry Reid says the debt limit will be raised to a new high, eighteen point seven trillion. Big surprise. They'll raise it as high as they need to. Nothing new. This is all about making this country so impoverished and so indebted that uh, the people will just literally be psychologically so beaten up they will they'll just do anything. And they're they're there already. This is just going to make it worse. They're for it. Yeah, they'll be but, for it. That's that's the whole course. point is to they make just, you choose. They want those entitlements. <laughs> and they want, yeah, exactly. They, they want don't to, care. Um, I just sent you, and I know you know about it. Yuri uh, Rezanov, I think his name is the KGB agent mm-hmm. who uh, uh, came to the United States. Uh, from, oh yeah, wonderful and, series. Yeah, there's a video on YouTube, and probably you, it's time to repost that on your site. Um, his warning of how exactly they're going to take apart the United States, and you know Joel Skousen's talked about it, um, and you know it, it's. It, this is this is a long term plan. The whole thing has been a long term plan from the mid '80s or so uh, to um, infiltrate and take this thing over because they believe that we are the uh, the wall that exists between them and a successful world socialist communist state, and that once we go down, then we will stop interfering with their world plans and it will come about so we have been the target we are targeted we were targeted and now we are in the finishing stages of this targeting and it all everything that's been done has been to weaken us everything that of oh, the confusion the the uh, uh the anarchy the dissension the, the media the education the false science uh all of it has been done to weaken us and to put us into a state of cowering fear so that they can then run right over us. And we're at, you can probably fully expect, I hate to say it, but some kind of invasion, uh, probably quicker than you think, probably within the four years of Obama's next four well, years. We've, we've been invaded by up, up to uh, 40, 45 million illegals already. So, yep. uh, That's part of what they were doing. That's part yeah. of the plan. Yeah. That was part of the destabilization of the of the country. Look how but, look how quickly they could ignite race war here. Black oh, against brown, brown against Arab, Arab uh, uh, just crazy. Yeah. White uh, is obviously going to be the primary target, the yeah. Caucasians. So, well, the uh, plan, as um, uh, you know, uh, I've said on your show before, you know, is uh, um, Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn had a meeting in the early seventies that was infiltrated by the FBI, and the mm-hmm. FBI reported that. They they knew that you know about eighty percent of white America was going to have to be killed because they were never going to conform to the socialist Marxist values. These are the mentors of our current president, I mean, you know. So I think we can kind of conclude what this is all about. Well, know, as I probably. said, they're going to roll it out now. Oh, you're going to see something so astonishing, and uh, I think America is actually going to cheer it on. That's the thing that's changed. I yeah. Think yeah. Agreed. They, they, they want it. Well, they've re-engineered the uh, alleged mental configuration of society uh, to the point that now it is uh, a dominant one, even though it's not the ultimate dominant force. It's percentage-wise, it's you know I don't know forty percent, but that's plenty. They're activists. They're making noise. They want those food stamps. They want those entitlements. They do, and they'll they'll fight for it. And any white person that gets in their way is is the obvious enemy. They've they've all got their axes to grind against whitey. So it'll be uh, it'll be pretty ugly. Uh, it will be, and um, we're right now, you know, whites are moving into enclaves, and well, they uh, have to if they're smart, they do. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be pretty much the inner cities will be completely minorities soon, and uh, that th- that will just increase the bifurcation of the of the entire thing and created the imbalance and right. more violence and. And Obama wants all this. This is what people have to understand. He wants it. This is how he how they intend yeah, they, to take over. They love chaos. I don't know if he'll ever actually. He may be our Fidel Castro. Be here fifty years from now. Uh, anything's possible. It, it really yeah. is. We'll see. Um, uh, what about uh, Joe Biden in this? He's been very quiet. Uh, a very strange individual. That man. Um, let's hope he doesn't morph on on stage sometime into a reptile. Because there's something really wrong with him. That's all I can say. Well, if you look at his grin, 
I, yeah. I mean, if that doesn't scare you, it looks like a Halloween mask, you know. And, yeah. and it would, fake uh, hair, fake teeth, um, yeah. facelift. Um, right. It's like, is there anything real on this guy? <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, when we come back after the break, I'm going to play a little bit of uh, Yuri Bezmanov uh, yeah. talking Great. Uh, to uh, uh, G. Edward Griffin. This is uh, 1985, actually. But this guy defected from the KGB. And his series of commentaries are so important, I cannot possibly overstate them. So I'll put one up tonight and urge all of you to look at the rest of the series. Uh, I don't know whatever happened to Yuri, but uh, he did he did take a chance, and he's a very brave man. And uh, he is. hopefully he's still around. All right, hold on. We'll be right back with Jay, and I'm going to play some of the conversation from a former KGB agent who's going to tell you exactly what the plan is. Yuri Bezmenov and his conversation. This is 1985 now, all right? Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion. What do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. All, all you have to do, all American mass media has to do is to unplug their bananas from their ears, open up their eyes, and they can see it. There is no mystery. There is nothing to do with espionage. I know that espionage intelligence gathering looks more romantic. It sells more deodorants through the advertising, probably. That's why your Hollywood producers are so crazy about James Bond type of, of, of thrillers. But in reality, the main emphasis of the KGB is not in the area of it intelligence at all. According to my uh, opinion and opinion of many defectors of my caliber, only about 15% of time, money and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. Most of the activity of that department was to compile huge amount, volume of information on individuals who were instrumental in creating public opinion. Publishers, editors, journalists, uh, actors, educationalists, professors of political science, members of parliament, uh, pre uh, representatives of business circles. Most of these people were divided roughly into two groups. Those who would tow the Soviet foreign policy, they would be promoted to the positions of power through media and public opinion manipulation. Those who refused the Soviet influence in their own country would be character assassinated or executed physically come revolution same way as in the small town of Hue in South Vietnam several thousands of Vietnamese were executed in one night when the city was captured by Viet Cong for only two days and American CIA could never figure out how could possibly communists know each individual where he lives where, where to get him and would be arrested in one night basically in some four hours before dawn put on a van, taken out of the city limits, and shot. The answer is very simple. Long before communists occupied the city, there was extensive network of informers, local Vietnamese citizens, who knew absolutely everything about people who are instrumental in public opinion, including barbers and taxi drivers. 
everyone who was sympathetic to the United States was executed. Same thing was done under the guidance of, of the Soviet embassy in Hanoi, and same thing I was doing in New Delhi. To my horror, I discovered that in the files where people were doomed to execution, there were names of, of pro-Soviet journalists with whom I was personally friendly. Pro-Soviet? Yes. They were idealistically minded leftists who uh, made several visits to USSR, and yet the KGB decided that come revolution or drastic changes in political structure of India, they will have to go. Why is that? Because they, they know too much. Mm -hmm. Simply because, you see, the useful idiots, the, the leftists who are idealistically believing in the beauty of Soviet socialists or communists or whatever system, when they get disillusioned, they become the worst enemies. That's why my KGB instructors specifically made the point, never bother with leftists. Forget about these political prostitutes. Aim higher. This was my instruction. Try to get into, into uh, large circulation established conservative media. Reach, feel the reach movie makers, intellectuals, so-called academic circles. Cynical, egocentric people who can look into your eyes with angelic expression and tell you a lie. These are the most recruitable people, people who lack moral principles, who are either too greedy or to uh, suffer from self-importance, uh, they feel that uh, they, they matter a lot. Uh, these are the people who KGB wanted very much to recruit. But also, to eliminate the others, to execute the others, don't they serve some purpose? Wouldn't they be no, the ones they, they rely they on? They serve purpose only at the stage of destabilization of a nation. For example, your leftists in the United States, all these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defenders, they are instrumental in the process of the, of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation. When their job is completed, they are, non, they are not needed anymore. They know too much. Some of them, when, when they get disillusioned, when they see that Marxist-Lenin has come to power, they, obviously they get offended. They think that they will come to power. That will never happen, of course. They will be lined up against the wall and shot. But they may turn into the most bitter enemies of Marxist-Leninists when they come to power. And that's what happened in Nicaragua. You remember most of these uh, former Marxist-Leninists were either put to prison or one of them split and now he's working against Sandinistas. It happened in, in uh, uh, Grenada when Maurice Bishop was, he was already a Marxist. He was executed by, by a new Marxist who was more Marxist than this Marxist. Same happened in Afghanistan when uh, first there was Taraki, he was killed by Amin, then Amin was killed by Babrak Karman with the help of KGB. Same happened in, in Bangladesh when Munjibur Rahman, very pro-Soviet leftist, was assassinated by his own Marxist-Leninist military comrades. It's the same pattern everywhere. The moment they serve their purpose, all the useful idiots are used to either be executed entirely, all the idealistically minded Marxists, or uh, uh, exiled or put in prisons, like in Cuba. Many, many former Marxists are in Cuba, I mean in prison. So basically America is stuck with, with demoralization and unless, even if, if you start right now, here, this minute, you start educating new generation of Americans, it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality uh, back to normal, n normalcy and, and uh, patriotism. All right, well, there you go. And I, I said that last night. There's really no way to turn this around unless we were to take uh, young children and begin to educate them properly, intelligently, and create meaningful, competent citizens. We can't do it any other way. Uh, these people who are out there cheering for Obama are going to be the first to be gotten rid of. And this guy knows what he's talking about. He made that real clear, and uh, we've seen it time and time again. Useful idiots. Best analysis ever. Yeah. There are many more segments of uh, Yuri Bezmenov, B-E-Z-M-E-N-O-V, and I'll put this one up later, and you can, you can listen and learn. This is, again, this is 1985. This plan has been in effect for a long time. Yeah. And I'd ask you this. Is America demoralized? Is grass green? <laughs> We're there. They did it. It's all part of a plan.